While palm oil has front page notoriety, tropical rainforest loss due to livestock has occurred at a four times greater rate than that due to palm oil. In the last 25 years alone, 10 times more rainforest has been lost due to raising livestock than what's been lost due to palm oil. So, so be concerned about palm oil, certainly, but then be 10 times more concerned about livestock and animal agriculture. Tropical rainforests cover 5 million square miles, which is 8% of Earth's land surface, housing more than one half of the world's 10 million species of plants, animals, and insects, many more millions left undiscovered, likely. The Amazon rainforest alone produces more than 20% of the world's supply of oxygen. You're likely breathing some of it now. Sure, Indonesia is losing its rainforest to palm oil plantations. It's important to take note. But all the rest of the countries seen on this slide are losing most of their forest due to livestock. Satellite analysis show that tropical rainforests are being destroyed at a rate of over 20 million acres per year. 31,000 square miles. That's more than 5 billion trees per year that are cut down in our tropical rainforest. 50% of these lungs of our planet, 50% of Earth's tropical rainforests have already been cleared. Unfortunately for those living in a rainforest, this is what a, a few thousand to a million year old tropical rainforest now looks like because the world's food priorities are with eating livestock, not with being stewards of other living things as we should be. This is the sad result, the burning and bulldozing of rainforests. Soon grass, pasture, and cattle will follow this in. Usually erosion, desertification, and localized climate change as well. If you choose to eat livestock here in the United States or anywhere else in the world, you're, you're supporting this destruction by fueling the global demand for meat. Brazil announced two years ago that deforestation in their country hit a 24-year low, which sounded good. But, but what does that really mean? Because they still cut down 2,000 square miles of rainforest during that one-year period of time, just in Brazil. And tropical rainforest rates, deforestation rates, have increased since that time in Bolivia, Peru, Malaysia, and numerous other countries of the world, including they've increased in Brazil again. There are three distinct opportunities that tropical rainforests have that could help mitigate climate change, in addition to what we just talked about, about conversion of land. First, we could eliminate deforestation and degradation. Just don't do it. Second, we could allow degraded forests to recover naturally. And we're going to look at a couple of these examples tomorrow. They're very exciting. In, in tropical rainforests as well as elsewhere in the world, how to allow these to recover naturally and what's happened. And third, we could reforest areas that have already been cleared. These efforts alone could sequester and also avoid greenhouse gas emissions up to five gigatons per year. That's about one half of the current total emissions from fossil fuels. It's, amazing, it's an amazingly simple approach to climate change that also fosters biodiversity and prevents further extinctions. Between 70 and 80 percent of all rainforest loss in the Amazon is due to raising cattle, with another 10 percent lost due to growing crops to feed them and other livestock. And remember, again, these livestock are grazing. It's, it's not a matter of factory farming. A, a, a quick word about soy. 90% uh, of the soy grown in the world, plus or minus a couple of percents, depending on who you're, who you're viewing, 90% of the soy grown in the world is fed to livestock. Only 7% is used for direct human consumption. The U.S. and Brazil are leading producers of soy. Since 2006, a soy moratorium has been in effect in the Amazon area, especially in the Cerrado region, where most of the deforestation of tropical rainforests has decreased substantially. The land soy occupies in the Amazon has risen, though, by 260 percent since 2006, but only 1 percent of that soy-occupied land is being grown on newly deforested rainforest. While that seems to be, on its surface, a success story for soy, it's not. Because all this soy that's grown there is grown and given to livestock. In China and Japan are countries that are buying up large patches of land elsewhere, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, to produce crops like soy to feed to their growing livestock operations. So while it may be superficially looking as if it's a success story there, it's not there, and it's also not in other areas of the world. By the year 2050, most rainforests will be gone. 
and the few patches that remain will have already been way past their tipping point. This, of course, means that all the millions of species that originally lived in these rainforests will be gone. Their indigenous tribes and medicine men, shaman, will be lost forever. Their once abundant water systems destroyed, and of course their oxygen, their oxygenation and climate regulatory mechanisms will be lost for the next few millions of years, which is how long it took these rainforests to develop. And we've wiped them out in less than 50 years.